Hello everybody and welcome back to Mountain Blade Bannerlord 2. So, at the end of the last part I left us on a bit of cliffhanger. And uh, yeah, we've got this, uh, you know, Kuze army who are trying to come our way. And now the Vlandians have come along and they're actually uh, pushing them away. And I think once the Vlandians are done with, uh, once we've beaten these guys, I might try and take back Vladib Castle because I'm sure the garrison is basically empty in there. So, I want to get these looters first. Because I want to level up a bit. And I installed a mod called uh, day, like Daily Experience or Daily Training or something like that. So, if you played Warband, uh, you know that if you there was a trainer skill. And depending on how high that skill was, you, you'd get daily XP for your soldiers to passively level them up. Because they were training, for example, right? And, um, like, you, you you, as a trainer were better, so you'd be able to, you know, give more XP the higher that skill was, so your troops would level up a bit quicker, and you could literally just sit in a cat When that trainer skill was maxed out, you could just sit in a castle and have XP just go up, and it would just level... You'd be able to get a decent army by just doing that. Not the best army, but you could, you know, passively upgrade it pretty nicely. So... I've actually downloaded something like that, and it does the exact same thing. So, depending on the amount of troops that are in my party, I'll get a higher effect. Because, um, obviously, I need more XP because I've got more troops. And it depends on your leadership skill as well. So, my leadership's fairly high, so I should get a decent benefit from this. And it just makes it not so hard to have to fight all, you know, all the time. I'm able to just do some passive leveling up. This battle's going to be going on anyway. They're actually significantly outnumbered right now. There you go. And let's get in there. So, yeah, we actually have more now. Because this uh, this gets bugged. This does the defender and attacker banners. It swaps the colors and banners around, but it's fine. Let's do this. After me! So I'm controlling all the battalion forces. You know, honestly, I don't mind. I don't care. Like, obviously, we're fighting with the Vlandians, but. Move! Soldiers! Forward! Archers! Stand apart! Well, our archers will deal with that flank. That didn't take long. Infantry! Move! Archers! Move! Archers! Forward! Cavalry! Sergeants! Take cover! We'll let our cavalry join uh, theirs. Arch Stop firing. Fire! Footmen, shields up! Arch up fire! Move it! Move! Move it! Forward! And for move! They're losing pretty badly in there, but... Once our archers get here, we'll be able to just mow them down. Fighters! Infantry forward! Actually, don't get in the archers' way. They should have known better to think that Blazey would fight side by side with them. Get in there. Archers, forward! Oh, whoops, I missed them. Go. 
Very nice. What? Oh, well, there we go. Look at the blood on us. Love the dynamic blood in this game. Our battalion riders are getting some kills here. Is that it? Yeah. God, this game looks so good. The armor looks so nice in this game. I don't think we've met properly, my friend. You saved my life out there. I still don't know your name. Calatil. My name is Bledry. Well met, indeed, Bledry. I'm forever in your debt. Oh, God. Okay. I thought she'd hate me, but nope. And we got a bunch of prisoners. Yes. Fians. Let's just get you in there. So we only had two wounded and... Yeah, two wounded and two killed, I believe. Let's head to Vladiv Castle. Oh, what? They're sieging here. Damn it. Hang on, let's have a look at... Um, we still got Yorig and Fafin here. The mercenary groups left. Tovi is still not strong enough. Hang on, we can f amend some of this real quick. Sorry, I got a drink in my hand. I'm doing this one-handed right now. Trying to hit keys and everything. Um, fiefs, that's what we want. So, I own a Stockel castle. But I want to give this settlement to somebody else. You cannot annex a ruling clan settlement. Oh, right, okay. What does this say? I don't have enough influence. So okay. That's fair. Surrender or die, brigand. Again, Fian's just leveling up. This is what we want. I wonder how strong Tial is. I want to catch these guys. Ooh, we're looking a bit tight. This is gonna look. This is looking a bit scary here. Okay, only two of the parties joined. That's good. I thought all three of them joined then. At fate, ah, so at <laughs> ah, fate smiles on me today. I can think of no sweeter music than your death rattle. Wow. Tasla, why does your name sound familiar? I am Tasla of the Yansera. Our clan has loyally served the Kuzik Kanate for gen. You don't even look like a Kuzik. I am always looking for good fighters. If you ask about me, I suspect you'll know that I take good care of my men. Your liege has to... Right. Okay, let's try this. We've only got one option here. Okay. So if we can get two successes and a critical success, that would be brilliant. We don't even have a critical... Why do we not have a critical success with this guy? Alright. Well, I guess you're going to have to die. <laughs> Is it going to be another night battle? Oh, shit. Why does it look like my army is so small? Bowmen! Move! Archers! 
Loose for infantry! Like, move. I don't know, these flags to me don't look like 32 archers, you know? Infantry! Make a shield wall! Cavalry! Move! Right, we're not playing to their hand with the horse archers that they're sending at us. Hopefully our archers will deal with these guys. Archers! Stand apart! Guys, more to spin around a bit. Pivot, pivot. There we go. Good pivot. Cavalry, move! Infantry, arrow, forward! Cavalry, charge! Whoa, 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 okay. I didn't even realize these were whole charge. Names out here. Kill the Blandian. Archers are hitting them from all the way back there. Arch, arch, arch! Everyone! I just don't want the horseman dying over here stupidly to one guy who's riding a horse. I think this one's still fighting here, so we'll deal with him. Ah, they're running. Okay. Oh, wow. We lost 10 men. How many? Two wildlings. Okay, that burns. A veteran warrior. Uh, three recruits. Sturgeon warrior and Ulf Hednar. I'm not too worried about the Ulf Hednar because they probably would have died in any battle. Unfortunately, due to the arrows. I need to bind them to a new key. That, like, that, you know, that unit specifically. And they got a bunch of... Oh, Battalion Highborn Warrior, yes. If they're your own faction, do they... Are they, like, more susceptible to joining you? I'm just curious. Achaku! So this guy, I believe, is actually a Vlandian, or maybe not. He had, There was a lot of Vlandian troops, but maybe the second lord helping us was, uh, you know. Well, <laughs> that's that. Oh, you bastards. Holy shit, there's a lot of lords coming up here. Most of them are mercenaries, I think. They took the castle. Okay. Oh, 
Okay. Um. I'll fight both of you. Wait, you're a Sturgeon, aren't you? Okay, why is it giving me one option now? I'm, I'm a bit confused as to why it's giving me one option rather than all the options it was giving me before. Like, it's not giving me any critical success chances now as well. Oh, God. I mean, the more lords that we kill, the better, but... Right, nearly two to one battle here. Archers! Move! Archer! Loose formation! Footmen! Move! Infant form a wall! Cavalry! Forward! Hopefully they make the same mistake. Bowman! Look that way! Arrows! Come on, finish that one off, archers. There we go. <laughs> Pivot archers. There we go. Now turn around. I don't think they can make it to us. Infantry attack! There we go, beautiful. Foot move! Horseman forward! Are you all running? Champion of all people who would get killed, it's a Fion champion. Yana, you are mine. Oh, we got some Sturgeon prisoners here. What do we got? Sturgeon hunter, warrior, no one good. <laughs> Great. Ah, right. How many people are in Vladiv Castle? 43 defenders. Oh, how I so want that place. Right, okay. I am not sure as to what the play should be now. In terms of... Should I make peace with the Kuzates and attack the Vlandians? Right? That's kind of what I'm thinking along the lines of. I'm thinking make peace with the Kuzates, attack the Vlandians, and then take a bunch of their stuff. Because it's right next to us, so we don't have to travel too far away from our own places, you know. So, you come here. I need to speak to you. Ooh, it's a Imperial Lord. I'm not surprised, actually. 18,000. Oh, wait, hang on. If we get rid of these guys... Twenty six K easy. Right. Perfect. We're in a good place now. We've got a bit more land. We can recuperate a bit now. Build our forces up. 
and then we can attack the Vlandians. I'm not going to attack them in the current state I'm in. I need to get a full party again. Get that full 150 odd, and we're a quarter of the way to, you know, uh, clan level five army, which will then will be will be sitting at nearly 200 men in the party then, which will be insane. I would love that so much. So we need some war horses as well. We got 600,000 gold. So if anyone makes war against us, we have more than enough money to make them, you know, make us have peace. Ooh, let's get him in. I don't know. I barely have any horse. That's perfect. The battalion guy wants to join us and the rest can go. So, trade. And we should have a lot of really nice... We should get a lot of, you know, stuff from this. Imperial studded leather. That actually kind of looks nice from what I'm looking at here. Heavy male mittens. There are only two better. What is our... trying to think 32 13 did we get any shoulder armor we did all right cool that actually looks good funnily enough yeah she's the only one who's with us isn't she so right Fifty-two thousand. that makes up for the piece we just made that for the money that we just lost now horses uh all right they don't have any it's fine Oh, they don't actually have enough money. Right, let's cancel. And let's uh, do it this way. Ah, that's green. Let's not sell that. Pull that. God damn it, the wolf head was in there somewhere. Give me that. Block that. Now we'll keep her with what she's got. Oh, right. Well, we went over. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind losing that little bit of money. Okay, perfect. I know that took a while, but uh, you need to bear with me sometimes. <laughs> right, let's wait here. Let's heal up our troops, and I'll be right back once um, I have anything to show, anything interesting happens. But for now, I'm just going to keep you know, getting recruitment, uh, you know, new recruits and stuff like that and leveling them up. Okay, so we got Golden here. I just caught him as I was heading down towards Britannia. I'm curious if I can... Right, let's see if we can convert him. Damn it. Right, we have to get two successes and... Two successes and a critical success. 59% chance. Critical success. All right, sweet. Yep, and... Okay, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Chill out, buddy. No, 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 no. No. 27,000. Excellent. So we got Godun on our side now as well. So we got Galden from that and Svana. So Fafen's at 73 now. Hmm. Okay. I'm 
I'm curious what's going on. Oh, wait, no. I'm, go I'm heading the wrong way. Let's buy some grain. Butter, cheese. And uh, I guess we'll carry on doing the same thing that we were doing. We've got a bunch of the Sturgeon Lords on our side now. How big is the garrison in Sabia? That's what I want to know. 300 and... Wow, 300... Damn, okay, they've built up quite nicely then. A garrison of over 200 men. That's insanely good. Um, who is... Is there anybody in the keep? Sven. Hello, Sven. Some of my noblemen hate me. <laughs> Hello, you are a very small man. I'm Sven, a chieftain of the Sturgeons. I'm sure someone with your reputation knows that nothing in this world is as valuable as the weight of your word. Speak truthfully with me and I shall do the same with you. Sweet. We need to check all of our castle to see if any lords move their daughters in or anything like that. Oh, there's a tournament going on. What are they? What What are we fighting for? Nah, sorry guys. I ain't about that tournament life no more. Let's just smelt this random stuff. Okay. So. Yeah, we need to head up to Britannia now. And eventually we will push on to the. Uh... I wonder where my recruits are at then. Not my recruits. Hang on. If I look in the encyclopedia. Of Stockholm Castle. Wait, didn't we give gov didn't he become a governor or something? No, we made Mullum the governor. Okay, so he's actually we've actually I think a couple of our companions are there, so we might actually tell them to go out and make some parties for us, and then they can, you know, once I disband them from the party, they'll uh, go and you know give the troops over. And you guys uh, have been saying maybe it's time for a new banner with Bledry. Oh, somebody said that in a stream, that in one of the, my Azurai streams. And uh, yeah, I will definitely be trying to make a wolf banner, but it's going to be nothing pretty. I'm pretty awful with that custom banner maker. But if one of you guys can somehow manage to make a, a, you know, a custom banner or something, I don't know how you'd actually manage to get that to me, but that would be, you know, that would be really cool. I'm definitely going to try myself though, that's for sure. But there is a custom banner maker, but it's kind of, I don't know, I've never been the best with make, like, uh, you know, creatively. I mean, like, making art, you know, not arts and crafts, it's not what it is, but you know what I mean. To that, you know what I mean. Right, cool. Ulm and... And then, well... Parzel... We won't give them anybody. Well, I'm curious to see. I'm only giving them nobody. And I know they could get killed by bandits or whatever. Or, you know, get ruined by bandits. But I'm really curious to see how quickly they actually get their parties full. I want to know. So, I want to see what they do. Let's follow them for a bit, actually. Are they both going off to get recruits? They didn't get any from there because I think a l another lord actually got one. Some. So it's a race to who can get to this village first, I'm imagining. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So yeah, so they are actually going around recruiting. That's pretty cool. So I'll leave them to do their thing for a while and see where they get. Let's see if we got any... Trade... And also, does it, how come some lords don't actually make armies when I'm at war? Because when I was against the Kuzits, nobody made an army then. Is it because the AI is stupid and they won't make armies? Or is it because they just happen to not to during that time? I'd like to uh, get an idea of like what the AI does in the middle of a war, you know?
Uh, horses. Shock troop. Fian. Warrior, Surgeon Soldier, Drusnik, Spearman. Right, we don't want a Kuzate Horseman, get out of here. We'll keep the Legionary because we'll say he's just an old warrior who wants to have a good final battle or something like that. <laughs> Basically. Right, I'm going to carry on going uh, leveling up everybody and uh, I'll be right back. So I was just uh, wandering through Britannia and I just realized, I zoomed out and I realized... They've only got Dunglanis, guys. They took Sionan from them. And it's just Dunglanis. And I'm curious, what are the wars like now? So, Batania is still fighting Sturgia. And that's it right now. But the Vlandians have made peace. What are the... Interesting. Okay. The Azerai are actually pushing up into... The Kuzate land now as well. The Azerai are actually winning the fight against the Kuzates, funnily enough. Oh well. It's a shame, but we knew it was going to happen eventually. To poor old uh, Britannia. One day we will rule all this land. So I just realized I've got enough riding skill to get a war horse. So more maneuverability, more speed more hit points, everything is better in every regard. So uh, yeah, I think we'll take that. Batanian War Mount, and that's perfect for Bledry too. We'll get the Vlandian Corsair, the Imperial Chargers as well to level up, because there's a lot of our cavalry units that are waiting to just get better. Yeah, look, they're just waiting to get better horses. So we'll give all of our Batanian Scouts that. And here's all the parties that are left. I wonder if I can talk to anybody. Bledry, it's been a while. There is something I'd like to discuss. What do you think of your liege, Renul? Caladog, my kinsman Caladog. Long may he live. All right, never mind. Picked the wrong man there. Urgian, I fought with you so many times. Come on, man. You are known as a man of honor. You may know me as one as well. Shit! Oh, wow, we have really low chances with him. You know, Caladog is asking you to do dishonorable things. Killing our own people in our villages that we used to have. That cannot be seen as honorable. The cruelty of Caladog is legendary now. Who cares what he stands for if his own realm is drenched in blood? Fifty-nine percent chance. Okay, that's not a good. Believe me, I'll be generous to those who came to me early. Perhaps not as generous to those who came late. Oh my God, we got a battalion lord. Well, I feel honour bound to support you, no matter how this ends. So does that mean he won't actually desert me? Because some will be like, "Oh, you have to pay me," because this is a dangerous step. Well, they would they leave if they don't get treated well, but this guy, Urgian, he will stick by my side no matter what now. If you guys know, because to, like, to me, because people respond to this differently. Sometimes I have to give them money. Sometimes A lot of the Batania lords don't like me because I left Batania. But if they say, oh, I feel honor bound to support you no matter how this ends, that sounds like he's dedicated to the end now with me. But he does, yeah, it makes sense though for some Batania lords to be like, Bledry is, you know, Oh, do you got you remember you remember Bledry? He he just disappeared one day. He's got he started to take land in Sturgia. We should just go and help him. Um, people are saying that you know he's t it's t you know he's taking back he's bringing the old Britannia back. He's bringing Cantrek back, the old language. He's bringing everything back. He's gonna return return it to its former glory. Britannia will be the one true ruler again of how it, the days of old, you know. And you know you could see you can imagine some lords who are. They got their last city. They're just waiting for a siege to happen. They're all scared inside the city, just waiting for everyone to be slaughtered by the Vlandians. Sure, you know that does make people defect. In like in real life, that would happen. You know, so 
Wait, did we get... We got all those lords? Hang on. Oh, shit. We got Sign, Nywin's party, Urgian's party. We got three different parties out of that. Not bad. Not bad at all. That's epic. Who's this then? Oh, Lucian. Oh, bastard. You went inside the... Fenegan. You don't sound... Oh, he is a battalion lord. Bledry, it's been a while. Like, yeah, all of these lords thought that Bledry, like, disabat like, you know, they all think he deserted the battalions and he just ran away and he didn't want to be a part of the fight. And maybe some pe some of the older lords, like Caladog, pe pe is Caladog's probably like, oh, Bledry, that guy, he's a coward. He left us in our time of need. And, but, like, Bledry probably believes that it's more cowardice to just, like, go to slaughtering your own people rather than actually trying to fight for the true battalion, you know? But anyway, there, there's a lot more detail that we could go into with that, and I'm not going to, because there's a whole can of worms. Um, but, like, some of these other lords as well, who, who kind of miss Bledry, I'd imagine, who, like, you know, Bledry was a symbol to the Batanians. Caladog may not have wanted to admit it, because he never get, he never liked Bledry much, you know? But, and Bledry didn't like him, vice versa. Uh, and so it's kind of created a bit of uneasiness. They always had a bit of uneasiness easiness between them. But some of the other lords, they saw him as a true leader of, you know, of the Batania of old. And they, they saw some of the old Batania in him. And, like, they're, like, he left. And some people were probably like, it probably wasn't as easy, you know, it probably wasn't as simple as him just deserting. Because that's not what Bledry was known for, for being a coward. He was always the first to charge in. He was with the men at the shield wall. You know, it, he was known as a legend among the Batanians, among the smaller lords, maybe not Caladog, because, again, he wouldn't want to admit it, because it would hurt his ego too much, because he loved taking all the big castles for himself as well, didn't he? So I'd imagine he had an eagle, uh, an eagle, an ego. And um, so some of them are like, oh, my God, Bledry, where have you been, brother? You know, sort of thing. I'd imagine that's what it'd be like. Although I know my relation isn't the best with them. It's only because I left Batania. So I can imagine some of them definitely wouldn't like him because of that. Oh, Lucian. God damn it. Yeah, you did have the same banner. Right. Let's go and find Lucian. Is Lucian in there? He is. Go to the keep. Kareen, hello. Wait, of the wolf skins? Lucian, hello. Bledry, it's been a while. So let's just say because Bledry's new haircut, not many people know, recognized him going into the castle. And then maybe so he, he, there was a couple of Fians pre protecting the door. And they were like, Bledry, it's so good to see you. And it's like, I need to do something. Can you uh, let me in sort of thing? Okay. You are known as a man of honor. You may know me as one as well. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. You know Caladog asks you to do dishonorable things in the name of Britannia. I will not do the same, and no oath binds you to doing evil. Do some good for the kingdom. Don't only think of Britannia, but think of Calradia and the state it's in. We, we just gonna let those Vlandians stomp us out of history forever? I think not. Yes! <laughs> Please, let this happen. Put your interests at the good of the realm first. There's too much at stake. Oh my god. It's a, it's just the perfect story. You've made your case. I feel honor bound to support you. I love how the Batanian lords, of all the lords, the Batanian ones are like, I feel honor bound to join you. They don't they're not like, oh, you need to pay me to let me join you. They're like, we know you as a legend. We know you're like one of the best leaders that the Batanians ever had. I would follow you into any battle and I feel honor bound. That's brilliant. We got a couple more parties out of that then, I believe. And we're at peace, so only every, everyone's only going to get stronger, you know? Right, I'm going to continue building the party, and uh, we'll be right back. So, guys, I just found this. Look at this helmet. We haven't seen this yet. I have never seen this. And it's the ones that some of the lords wear. And it has 46 head armor. Mine has 42, which is still pretty good, but... I'm going to put that on. 
the bear pelt on because I think it, the fur looks better on Bledry. I think he's always supposed to wear fur more than anything. So, yeah, we'll definitely keep the wolf pelt on. I'm not going to wear that helmet. As much as I want to wear it, maybe I'll buy it for somebody else. No. Then we've got the Ranger Mail Highland Warlord Braces, which just sounds badass. They're not as good as the uh, Rough Tide Braces, weirdly. I don't know why Roughly Tide Braces would be better. They need to sort that stat out a bit, I think. But I'm actually going to get a pair of these. Uh, oh. So, for when Bledry retains his army, I'll have Highland Warlord Boots, Highland Warlord Braces, Highland Noble Armor. Oh, Highland Noble Braces. Yeah, look, the Noble Braces are 18, but then the Highland Noble Armor is better. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. This game make no damn chance. And then they got Armored Bear Skin here. But it, actually, the regular Bear Skin has more armor than the, uh, than the Armored Bear Skin, which is a bit odd. But yeah, we're definitely seeing some of the newer stuff pop up. So, let's see if these guys got anything. I'm looking for a particular thing right now. Let's get these guys. I want to get all the good shit. So there are a particular set of shoulders that I've seen in another playthrough I was doing, just testing stuff out. And I've yet to find them in this one, funnily enough. And I found them at the beginning of the game, but I can't seem to find them in my own one. Maybe they didn't... Holy shit, 100,000 for that armor? Really? Is it worth that much? Weird, okay. So we got more... More Drusnik. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I'm going to go see if I can find this armor. I mean, you'll... Oh, don't get involved. You'll know if I find it because I'll cut to it. If I don't, then I'm just going to skip it. So, um... Some of you may know a moderator of mine on my streams is called uh, Brian Benson. And, uh, well, he pointed out in one episode that Melodia had joined the Vlandians, right? And I'm not sure if I actually spoke about this in the past. I may have. But um, I didn't actually look at it. Obviously, I trusted what he said. But here is proof. Melodia, look at him. Sitting there with his 125. Fighter killing his own people. Hello, Maladia. You got minus 98 relation with me. Wow. Must be fun to uh, be a coward, eh? Yeah, we don't have good chances with this guy. That's why the chances are low, because we don't have good relation. I don't want to. I don't want a piece of shit like Melodier in my uh, in my place anyway. He's a he. He joined the Vlandians. There's no. There's no freaking way. No. I'm. There's no chance he's joining me. Doesn't deserve it. Ooh, sixty-two looters. So guys, very interestingly, Fafen just created an army. For some reason, I don't know why. We're not at war with anybody. But he created an army? Like, uh, if anyone would know why he randomly created an army while I'm not in war, is this like he's planning to overthrow me with his own army or something like that? Because right now he owns the beer. If he... I'm actually... Like, if he, like, rejected... Uh, I don't know what, what the word is. Rebelled against me and, like, tried to overthrow me, he could... He has a couple of lords. And he... If he took this back... If he... Do, sorry. If he defected... Jesus Christ, I can't get my words out. If he defected, he'd actually own Sabia. So the Sturgeons would be alive again as a faction, which I find very interesting. But have, let's have a look at the health of our armies. Ooh, look at that. 
So we have all of these guys here as well. So Pazel and Blood Axe, in the time that I have let them roam free, they have gotten some people, not many, unfortunately, but... Um, yeah, we're waiting for... So we got Lucian on our side. We got a bunch of um, Batanian Lords now, which is really nice. We have... Five, yeah. Five, awesome. So we could get... I'm curious... If we got all of these guys here. That looks like a pretty beefy uh, amount of troops. Because the strength in the top right isn't uh, very good. I'll just quickly uh, figure this one out. So we'd be sitting at 534. That's a lot. We don't have enough influence to get all of these people together. That is what I'm struggling with the most right now is influence. And if I look in the kingdom tab here, policies, the realm was formally authorized the ruler to maintain a standing force of mercenaries even in peacetime. The ruler gains double influence from mercenaries. Non-ruler clan gains 10% less influence from vassals. No, I want to get make sure my lords all get good support in this. Tribunes of the people. That's about taxes. I don't want to do anything to do with taxes just yet. Um, marshals. Armies led by tier 5 plus nobles require 10% less influence. Influence of the ruler clan is reduced by 1 per day. Well, that's definitely what I, not what I want. I want something that gives me influence. Military achievements grant 30% more influence, but troop wages are increased by 10%. Mm. Tier 5 plus clans. We're not tier 5, are we? No. Ruler clan earns 5 influence per day, but non-ruler clans earn... The ruler is considered semi-divine and certain rituals are to be performed in his or her presence, increasing his or her air of authority. Mm. Town security is increased by one per day, but ruler clan gains one per day, but town taxes are reduced by 5%. Should we do that? Wait, I can overrule that? I thought it was mo- I know I just used influence to do that, which kind of was very counterproductive, actually. Um, now that I think about it. I forgot <laughs> that that costs influence. But I want to see what Faffin's got going on over here. Wait, why is Caval? Why is this burning? Oh, is that glitched or something? Because we could speak to them. Or did, like, bandits do it or something? Yeah, so we'd get an army of 500 men, but we know the Vlandians can muster up much more than that. We'd probably be looking at a huge battle if we uh, pretty much guaranteed a huge battle once we get an army together and we go after the Vlandians, for sure. We'd most certainly uh, have... But I'm thinking, if we do, you know, hit the Vlandians with a taste of their own medicine, we, I think, we should take Varnavapool. So we have this chain here. We have this group here, and it lets our parties be able to recruit. Because the more land we get, the more, e you know, the more easier it's going to be for our own people to recruit. And, um, because we can, we can recruit from any village, right? I'm not sure if lords specifically who are under a certain faction can only recruit from the towns that the faction owns. I don't know about that. I don't think they do, though. But if that is the case, it'd be perfect if we got this, because it would give us a bit more, you know, the more land we take, the more places we have. But I guarantee you, we go down to Varnavapool, Varnavapool, and, uh, right, there's Fafn. He's got an army of 200 of his own.
He's just patrolling? Are they just... That's just him, is it? There's no other lords in this army. Oh, there is. Good. I was going to say. Jesus Christ, dude. I was going to say, that's one huge-ass army you managed to get together. Wait, what's he doing? Why are you going down here? He's just patrolling, right. That's good, actually, because he'll be just killing looters around the place. And actually be leveling up his troops, which is really nice, actually. Oh, look, it's our battalion lords. They've arrived. They've got here. They're, everyone's fighting for trying to go and recruit people, by the looks of it. But yeah, there's so many people wandering around trying to recruit people that and just patrolling that we're definitely going to have to do something soon, right? But I'm thinking, we take this, guaranteed, right? Well, I'm going to go straight after we take Vanoverpol. Vanoverpol. Uh, we'll take this, guaranteed an army's going to be on its way, right? They're currently, uh, let's see who they're fighting, actually. So the, where are they? Vlandia is only against the Azerai. So most of their armies, if anything, going to be down here, right? So they're going to have to come all this way. No doubt we'd have to, we'd be able to get a siege off in Van Vanoverpool. No problem, right? But, but as soon as we leave that place and we move into here, right? I guarantee we'll catch an army here. An army will be coming down here to retake it or, you know, whatever have you. Or try and take Sabia. And we're going to clash straight in the middle. Guarantee you anything about that. But um, maybe if they do take their sweet ass time, I'm either going to do one of two things. I'm either going to take Vanoverpool and then head straight to Balgard, which is going to be hard. Doing two city sieges in a row is solid. So I'm either going to... Right, okay, i got three different av avenues of approach here, right? In my mind. We go after Vanoverpool. We take that, guaranteed. That, that is going to be the first thing we do, is take that city, right? We're going to go down here, and we're going to do one of three things. We're going to, I think, two of them do involve fighting the army, right? That will come across, because we will come across one, I don't doubt it. Or we're going to get a bunch of random lords come down here, and an army come down, right? It could be a huge force of Landians that approach us. But, I'm thinking... We take Vanoverpool, and we take Decor Castle, and we make peace, right? Probably, so, take Vanoverpool, fight an army, and then take Decor Castle. Or we could try and persuade them, you know, that could go either way, but we'll try that, and most likely it won't work. But, we take Vanoverpool and Decor Castle, then we make peace, rebuild our strength, do it again. We take Balgard then, right, and so on. Or, we take Vanoverpool... Fight the army, and then go after Balgard. Or if we don't come across any army, we just take Vanoverpool and Balgard, and if we don't come across an army, we don't come across one. We'll just take Takor Castle and that. Or I literally just take Vanoverpool and I make peace, rebuild, and go again, and go and get fight Balgard, and then take Balgard and Takor Castle because they're so close, you'd be able to pull that off in a surprise attack, in a surprise declare war. You'd be able to do that. You'd be able to take Balgard and Sakor Castle pretty quickly, I think, before anybody was none the wiser. Then make peace. Perfect. Boom. Then we have this whole section secured. We can get loads of recruitment going on, loads of rebuilding. Then we can push out. Take Omor and Ove Castle. Right? And, and all the meanwhile we have a Stockholm castle here which is owned by me so it won't be taken from any of our current lords right 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 i know i say right a lot but i'm just trying to gauge your attention a Stockholm castle that's more of a distraction castle at this point than an actual castle i care about so what i'm hoping is that rather than i'm sure they're going to send an army to go and look after their own stuff and try and stop me right but no doubt extra forces are probably going to head straight down to a Stockholm castle and then that'll distract some of the lords. What? So I don't care if they take that. We'll retake it after. So we would have taken Omor and Ove Castle. They may have taken that, but I don't, uh, you know, a stock or castle, but I don't care. And this is where it gets a bit more difficult strategically because they own so much around here. <coughs> so 
I'm thinking we take after that, if we made peace again, rebuild, we go after Mazadan Castle. Or we go after Varcheg. Or we go back after Ostoko Castle. Take Ostoko Castle and Ravel. Maybe take Ravel, then Ostoko Castle. Because they can't get across here. So we lock this area off. So we basically got this whole top bit here. And then we've just got this little bit here that we can focus on. Then say we made peace again. Because I got the money for it. We take Varcheg Castle and Mazadan Castle. Boom. We've got this whole section locked off. We've got all of this along here. We're starting to actually look like a proper kingdom then. Like a good kingdom, I mean, with a decent power involved. Then we do it again. We take, we start encroaching back onto Batanian land. We take this and we take Mechleova Castle, Mechlovia. Because they don't have too much land here and the Empire, say if they're at war with them, they could take it, they could start, you know, distracting them. They have Diathema actually. We could take, or we could take Argoron and then push up to Diathema. We've got two major cities. That cuts them off here, right? But that'll be harder to defend because it's not a part of our mainland. I'd rather keep everything as one big clump of land that we got rather than making us spread out. I think we, it's best keeping us all together. So I'm going to look in the kingdom tab. How strong are we looking? We have now got 2,182 strength. We are almost of equal strength to the Northern Empire. Batania is sitting at 700. We're much stronger than actual Batania at this point. The Kuzates, they're back up to 8,000. Western Empire is crushed. Southern Empire is crushed. Azariah at 5,500. I'm scared to look at Vlandia's numbers. Sturgia. I mean, we, we've taken most of the Lords of Sturgia. Then Vlandia is sitting at 11,000. So Vlandia are getting stronger. So the longer we wait, the worse it's going to be. And I mean, Fafin's mustered up 220 men of his own. Like, Fafin's creating armies now. So it makes me confident that some of our lords, we've got so many lords now, that the strong ones will create armies and go and siege themselves. Which would be perfect. I could just, you know, maybe the, if somebody else, if we could declared war and somebody started an army, they did, like, you know, they built an army and loads of lords joined, I'd probably just go and join them. I've got 150 men. That's great to join an army. And if they were going for a target that I want to take, I'll just go with them. I don't even have to spend the influence then. So, it's actually looking really positive right now, I think. I know we haven't had much fighting. We had some at the beginning. But I'm just preparing for the inevitable. Absolutely preparing for the inevitable here. I want to see, you know, I just want you to see most of the journey. You know, me collecting the lords, gathering the men. I, like, think Mass Effect and General Shepard, right? I know he's not, Blood is nothing like that and it's a sci-fi, whatever. But the base concept... Creating an alliance that has never been seen before in Calradia and overcoming incredible odds sort of thing. That exact sort of theme I'm going for with Bledry at this point, with his kingdom. And, um, let's, uh, let's have him grow back a bit of a, uh, I mean, what could he have? What would Bledry grow? I mean, he grows a huge beard, right? So he'd start growing a full beard. And <laughs> we give him some, like, sideburns. Because, see, these are two, like... Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe in the process of his beard growth, we'll get this. Then we'll go here. Then we'll go here. 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 And then tie it up. And then that's back to classic Bledry. And maybe we'll give him his old hair back. Tell me if you guys like the dreaded hair more than you did the original hair. But... Let's say he's grown... It's been some months now, so he would have had a beard at this point. He would have probably been able to grow back his old beard, but... I mean, we're gonna build it up for the sake of the story, you know? So, yeah, look, he looks a bit more badass with that beard. Time has gone by. He's, had, he's got a bit more of a kingdom. He's been a bit more prosperous. He's now grown a bit of a beard back. After, you know, he's the kind of... I think that his beard growth will be kind of representative of his journey as well. You know, I think that would be a cool thing. So say if we like took all of this, right? I think maybe his beard would grow a bit longer. We took like all of this, his beard would grow a bit longer. We take Batania back a bit longer. Because there's like, we, I mean, we could go through like seven stages of beard growth here. So, I mean, it'll slowly grow back. I know somebody said, no, the beard. Don't worry, it'll be back. 
And then in like the final push against Blandia, he'll have his full beard back. He'll have his maybe his full hair back if you guys want him to have his old hair, his old armor on, and he'll be like no more. So yeah, I think we've got a really badass thing going on here. We've got so loads of battalion lords because it doesn't matter if these lords defect because they don't own any land either, and the battalions aren't going anywhere. It's not like we're in a war, so they don't have a, we're not getting defeated in any way, so they have no reason to leave. So if we look here at our own party, so we have 73 infantry, 50 ranged, all of them being Fianns, not all of them Fian class specifically, but they're all noble sons of Batania, and 27 cavalry. That's a pretty nice, like, um, division of units. Almost 25, you know, that's almost a perfect ratio that I want, really. 75, like, you know, 75, 50, and 25. That's almost a perfect, you know... I want the infantry to have 25 more, you know. That, I don't know, that's perfect to me. But yeah, the, the Sturgeons make up the bulk of the infantry, the Battalions make up all of the archers and some of the infantry, and horsemen, mostly the horsemen as well. So it's a it's a it's definitely an alliance between, um, most certainly an alliance between the Sturgeons and the Batanians right now. Or, well, the Sturgeons and Batanians are one now. You know, this this particular Batania that we're building. Sorry, not Batania, Cantrek. This is a Cantrek and Sturgia thing, but Cantrek and Sturgia, like, Batania and Sturgia together are Cantrek now. You know, Sturgia is no more. It's now going to become Cantrek as well as Batania. There will not be any more existing Batania, Sturgia. Cantrek will be these different cultures combined. So, yeah. God damn. This is, I, I love the story aspect. I love building a story. So this has been amazing. Um, I hope you guys, we got some work to do. I think in the next part, or maybe in between parts, I'm going to try and build up my influence that Bledry has. I don't know how I'm going to build influence. I'm not really quite sure how to get it. You know. Maybe we're looking... Influence represents the contribution of a character to the success of the faction. And usually earned mostly by fighting in wars. You also gain a bit of renown simply by virtue of holding and governing a fief. It represents political capital. Dues paid. Favours in the favour bank. All the terms used to represent the currency of power. You spend it on compelling people to assist you in your camp. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, okay. But we're looking really strong. 150 men in our own party. Fafin's got a huge army here. Well, not huge in comparison to Vlandia, but for us it's pretty... Uh, we haven't seen a 220 army yet, so... And we'll be able to, once I get the influence, we'll be able to build up... A lot, you know, a lot of influence. And build up some huge armies now with the, the lords that we got. I wonder whose banner that is. Lonalion? No, l wait, hang on. Lona Lion? Lonalion? I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, if you guys have any tips on how to build influence quicker or like how to get influence quicker, I know, quicker. I know it's like fought, like from fort battles <coughs> and stuff, but yeah. If you guys know anything about that, please do say. And uh, I'll see you all in the next part. Goodbye, guys.